my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense is with God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a life for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised, at horn by the nation, and a servant of rulers. Kings shall see and rise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes out of the book 1 Corinthians. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Susthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace and mercy to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let me start out with a, a list of men sent by God to do his will. The first is Abraham. And Abraham was sent from a city called Ur in the land of the Chaldeans in the Euphrates River Valley and then sent to an area next to the Mediterranean Sea, a land that God would later promise to Abraham and his descendants. And we call it today the promised land. The next person is Moses. And Moses was sent by God to tell Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, to let the children of Israel leave the slavery of Egypt and then to lead them to the promised land. And the third person is John the Baptist. And John was sent to reveal Jesus, their savior, to the children of Israel. And the fourth is Jesus. God, the Father's only Son, that he sent to take the sins of the world away. Now, getting back to Abraham, God promised Abraham that his descendants would be so many that he couldn't even count them, just like the stars of the sky. And Abraham believed God's promise and trusted in him. God, trust, God tested Abraham in this way. He told him to go to the land of Moriah and sacrifice as a burnt offering his only son, Isaac. And on the way, Isaac asked his father Abraham, where is the lamb for the burnt offering, father? And Abraham answered that the Lord would provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And as Abraham raised his hand to slay his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. From there, Abraham saw a ram caught in a thicket and used it to sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord provided a ram for the sacrifice. And if we turn to Moses, now Moses told Pharaoh ten times to let God's children leave Egypt, and each time when Pharaoh refused, God sent a plague through Moses. The tenth plague was that all the firstborn males of all men and beasts in Egypt would be slain. And God told the children of Israel through Moses to smear lamb's blood on both sides and over the doors of their homes. And God sent his destroyer to slay all the firstborn males. But when he saw the lamb's blood around the doors of the children of Israel, he passed over and did not harm them. The blood of sacrificed lambs. Moses then led them to Mount Sinai, and the Lord gave them the law, his laws and statutes to Moses. And one of these statutes was to obtain the forgiveness of sin, that the person who knew their sin that they had committed should take an unblemished male lamb to the priest for sacrifice. It was called a guilt offering. And again, individuals were saved by the blood of a male lamb. Many years later, John the Baptist was sent by God to prepare the way for the one that was to come. And the Apostle John gave us an account of John the Baptist doing just that. In the Apostle's account, John told us how, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, how did he know that Jesus was the Son of God? He knew that the Holy Spirit would come upon him and remain on him, and that is Jesus. We also know that it was through John and his writings about John the Baptist that it was God himself that sent John to be that witness for Jesus. In our gospel account, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. There's a lot packed into that statement by the Baptist, I think. First, when any of the Jews would hear the words, Lamb of God, they certainly would know that those words referred to the promised one, the Savior, the Messiah. They would have known that the sacrificing of lambs as a guilt offering was done not just to remind them of the Passover, but was pointing forward to the Lamb of God that would be their Savior. John the Baptist said this statement to the two disciples that were with him. 
Behold the Lamb of God. And his two disciples then, one Andrew and the other not named. And I would like to suggest that maybe the unnamed one was likely John, the son of Zebedee, the apostle, who had written the account. The Apostle John also uses the same lamb ter terminology in his account uh, of his vision written in the book of Revelation. As an example, in the fifth chapter, John is before the throne of God. Four creatures are praising God, and the 24 elders are there also. God holds out a scroll, written on both sides, sealed with seven seals. And a mighty angel proclaims, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? No one came forward. And John started to cry out loud. But one of the elders came over and talked to John and said, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And John's account even goes further. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent into the, all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. My friends in Christ, Jesus died on the cross to save you and anyone who will believe and trust in him. It was the sacrifice of lambs in the Old Testament that pointed to the sacrifice once for all sins for those who believe. Our Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God, is at the right hand of the Father as he sits on his throne. And his, he is the head of the church that he ransomed with his blood. Blood of the perfect Lamb of God. And this has made you as believers priests to our God. And this is a very high honor. And if you want to know more, a little more and more in depth about the, the Word of God, as written in the book of Revelation, Pastor Lochran is offering a Bible study on this very topic between services on Sundays. That's right. You are. You are one who is a priest to our God, because you too have been sent. Much like Abraham, Moses, and John the Baptist, you have been sent. You have been sent by the Lamb of God whose blood saved you from your sins and gave you hope of eternal life. And we know this in the Great Commission, don't we, from the book of Matthew. And Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And what a, what a great honor to serve our Lord in this way. To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. At this time, please rise as we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
the prayers of the church. In addition to our prayer page, um, we pray for Deborah Cooper, Michael Bigler, and Charles Brandt. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Answer us according to your promises and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. In your mercy. Merciful God, you formed your son in the womb of your servant Mary to be a light for the nations. Preserve that light among your people. Gather us around your word and sacraments. Enlighten and strengthen us by your grace and grant that we might reflect the light of Christ to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, the heavens declare your handiwork and each day and night testify to your majesty. Bless all teachers and students that in their explorations of the arts and sciences, they may see your creativity and glorify you. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you watched over the tribes of Jacob, providing them with both daily bread and redemption in abundant measure. Watch over the homes of your people. Bless them with all that they need for this body and life and preserve them in the glad confidence that Christ is their strength and their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, your son consented to be the servant of rulers and to be abhorred by the nations so that he might redeem the world. Fortify all in authority with courage and wisdom to govern justly and cultivate penitent hearts among them so that they may gladly prostrate themselves before their Redeemer on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, your Son became the Lamb of God to take away all of our sins and infirmities by his death and resurrection. Remember all who are in need of your help and healing. Steve, Joan, Jennifer, Jackie, Heather, Lisa, Paul, Navitha, Carl, Mika, Joyce, Reggie, Barbara, Jim, Dennis, Tony, Joanne, Jean, Deb, Gary, Clarence, Chris, Susan, Ed, Heath, Pat, Roz, Ebony, David, Anita, Barbara, Donna, Katerina, Katerina, sorry, Helen Ray, Robert, Abby, Deborah, Michael, Charles, and Lord, bring peace and comfort to the family of Woody Whited, the Dudley family, and the family of Arlene Dinobi. Deliver them according to your merciful will and preserve them in the certainty that their sins are taken away. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, John the Baptist first revealed your incarnate Son as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and foretold his victory over sin by the sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Prepare the hearts of all who receive the same body and blood of our resurrected Savior this day, that they would welcome him in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that we who have celebrated the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ may die to sin and rise to new life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our hearts the Christ announced by your forerunner, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, just a reminder about our offerings, and that is, you may bring uh, your tithes and offerings as you come up for Holy Communion as the plates are up front. Another way of, of 
of giving to the Lord is through grace-lutheran.com. At this time, please rise. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature. You have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace with those around you.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns <coughs> with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Gracefully serve the Lord.